Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Okay, we'll see the answers uh, for uh, these three questions. I don't know. I don't think you could have tried the third one. We'll see the answers for the first and second. Okay, so find the distance between the points R and S. Uh, can I get the final answer from uh, any of you? R S is equal to. Not sure. Okay. So R is given by the coordinates A plus B, comma A minus B, and uh, S given by the coordinates A minus B, comma minus A minus B. All right. So R S is equal to square root of difference between the x coordinates. So we have A minus B minus A plus B. Difference between the x coordinates A minus B minus A plus B. The whole squared plus difference between the y coordinates. <clears throat> so minus a minus b minus a minus b the whole square. All right, so this is the first step is equal to square root of a minus b minus a minus b the whole squared plus minus a minus b minus a plus b the whole square which is square root of a minus a gets cancelled minus b minus b is minus 2b the whole square plus out here minus b plus b cancels out so minus 2a the whole square right so this is square root of uh, minus 2b into minus 2b minus 2b into minus 2b so plus 4b squared 4b squared plus minus 2a into minus 2a so plus 4a squared okay 4a squared so now 4 is common it's b squared plus a squared so you can also write it as a squared plus b squared all right now 4 comes out of the square root as 2 uh, but uh, this expression a squared plus b squared remains under the square root the square root of 4 is 2 and uh, the expression a squared plus b squared remains under the square root. So 2 into square root of a squared plus b squared units. Yeah, if you have any questions, please ask me. Go oh, to the second one. <clears throat> the question is uh, if a x comma y is equidistant from the points b and c, prove that bx is equal to a y. So we have this point a given by the coordinates x comma y, and we have two other points b and c, b given by a plus b comma b minus a and c given by a minus b comma a plus b 
Okay. And this point A is equidistant from B and C, which means AB is equal to AC or AB squared is equal to AC squared. So, so you don't have to use a square root symbol here. So uh, a difference between the X coordinates, the whole square. So that will be A plus B. The, you need to take the uh, coordinates of the points A and B. Okay, to work AB squared. To work AB squared, you need to take the coordinates of the points A and B. Okay, so difference between the X coordinates, the whole square. So A plus B minus X, the whole square, plus difference between the Y coordinates, B minus A minus Y, the whole square. Just that we don't use a square root symbol here because it's AB squared is equal to AC squared. So use the coordinates of A and C. A minus B minus X, the whole squared, plus A plus B minus Y, the whole square. All right. Okay. So now you can, uh, you know, uh, use the identity uh, A plus B plus C, the whole squared is equal to A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus 2AB plus 2BC plus 2CA to expand. Uh, see, what do you see here? These are uh, trinomial squared or square for trinomial. The expression here has three terms, one, two, three terms. In fact, all these four expressions have three terms in them and you'll have to square them, right? So use what you see here is the square of a trinomial square of a trinomial everywhere. So you will have to use this identity a plus b plus c the whole square is equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus two of so sorry plus two a b plus two b c plus two c a. I was saying like plus two of a b plus b c plus c a. No, you can just use this. This is for a different purpose. All right, so see that's one way of doing. You can do it like that. Just that it will take a little longer. We'll see an alternate method where we can finish it in lesser time. All right. So for that, what you have to do is you need to transpose. You need to transpose. So transpose what and how do you decide which one to transport a uh, transpose? So see here, this this one has A, B, and X. And on the this is on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you have A, B, X here. We'll have these two terms on the same side. We'll have these two expressions on the same side. So A plus B minus X, the whole squared. This one will move to the left hand side as minus A minus B minus X, the whole squared. Now look at this term, A, B, Y. And here also in the left hand side, we have B, A, Y. So let's transpose that to the right hand side, this one, which is in the LHS to the RHS. Is equal to. A plus B minus Y the whole squared minus B minus A minus Y the whole squared. If you are going to continue like this, then you have to expand using this identity. That's correct. Maybe a little more time consuming. When you uh, do this transposition, you have here an expression that's of the form a squared minus B squared, A plus B into A minus B. Here also you have A squared minus B squared, A plus B into A minus B. Okay. Just write this identity. Okay.
I'll just write the earlier step again so that uh, I don't make a mistake in working. So the last step, a plus b minus x the whole squared minus a minus b minus x the whole squared is equal to a plus b minus y the whole squared minus b minus a minus y the whole squared. Okay, so this is what we get after transposing. We uh, uh, we we have you know uh, got the expressions that have a, b, and x to the left hand side and a, b, and y to the right hand side. Now they look like difference of two squares. So a squared minus b squared is a plus b. So a this is a. See here a. What I'm writing is a children. This is a plus b. This is b. This is b. A plus b. Okay, into a minus b. See, this is a minus b. This is minus b. This is on the left hand side. A squared minus b squared is a plus b into a minus b. A plus b, a minus b. Same identity on the right hand side. A, this is a plus b plus this is b. A plus B into this is A plus B into okay into A minus B. This is A minus B minus B. So next step, we'll open the brackets. A plus B minus X plus A minus B minus X into A plus B minus X minus A plus B plus X is equal to. A plus B minus Y plus B minus A minus Y into A plus B minus Y minus B plus A plus Y. Minus B plus A plus Y. Yeah. So now what happens? Uh, plus B minus B. So we have A plus A 2A uh, plus, uh, sorry. Um, a plus a 2a minus x minus x is minus 2x. Here, a minus a cancels, minus x plus x. So b plus b, 2b into 2b is equal to a minus a. So we have b plus b, 2b, minus y minus y minus 2y. Here, uh, minus y plus y minus b plus b so we have 2a all right so 2b 2b now you can uh, take out two common also here so to see i'll just put this 2b in the front children see here i'll put the 2b in the front now 2b into here i'm taking out two common a minus x <clears throat> I hope all of you agree with me. I've just, I've taken this 2B in the front and then now uh, in this expression, I've taken out 2 common. Okay, is equal to, again, I'll put this 2A in the front into, I'm, I'm taking out 2 common, so B minus Y. So now on either sides, uh, you can cancel out, no? So you can cancel this 2, 2, 2, 2 on both the sides. Correct? So now you're left with what? You're left with? B into A minus X is equal to A into B minus Y. So now we have to open the bracket. We have to open the bracket now. So we have AB minus BX is equal to AB minus AY. And now you can see AB on either side gets cancelled. And uh, now we have minus BX is equal to minus AY. Minus gets cancelled on both the sides. I think this is what we had to prove. Correct? Prove that bx is equal to a y. Yeah. So we prove that bx is equal to a y. Hence proved. So the takeaway from this working is uh, you can transpose in a situation like this. You can transpose accordingly and uh, use the identity a squared minus b squared is a plus b into a minus b.
Is that fine, children? Any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Aniruddhan. All right, over to the next one. So in case you need to rework this, I'll be sharing the images of uh, all the sums we'll be doing in today's class on WhatsApp. So <clears throat> just in case you'll have to complete, you can use the images on WhatsApp. Next one. Okay, so in three, so I don't think you'd have done the third one. We'll do this together now. So in three, we have three points A, B, and C. A given by minus four comma three. B given by minus two by five comma six. And uh, C given by two comma eight. So we need to check if these three points are collinear or not collinear. So we know one thing that when we have three points in a plane, either they are collinear or they'll form a triangle. These are the only two things that can happen when we have three points in a plane. When we, when we have three points in a plane, either they are collinear. If they are not collinear, they form a triangle. If they are not collinear, they form a triangle. A triangle is formed by three points in a plane of which, uh, okay, a triangle is formed when we have three points in a plane and the points are non-collinear. And the points are non-collinear. So three, with the help of three non-collinear points, you can form a triangle. If the points are collinear, no triangle is formed. If the points are collinear, we have three points because the triangle has three vertices. So three points are needed to define a triangle. But if the three points are collinear, no triangle is formed. If the points are not collinear, then a triangle is formed. If the points are not collinear, a triangle is formed. So these are, there's nothing, you know, there's, you don't have any other situation. So with three points, either they are collinear or a triangle is formed. Okay. So how do you check for collinearity? The check for collinearity is if the points are called A, B, and C. A, B, and C. You need to find A, B. You need to find B, C. You need to find A, C. Then if A, B plus, plus B, C is equal to A, C, then the three points A, B, and C are collinear. If A, B plus B, C is equal to A, C, then the points A, B, C are collinear. Okay, let's find A, B. A, B is equal to square root of distance formula. Distance formula. A, B is equal to square root of difference between the x coordinates. Minus 2 by 5 plus 4, the whole squared, plus 6 minus 3, the whole squared. So I'll just uh, continue. Okay, square root of 5 is the common denominator. Five is the common denominator. So minus two plus 20, the whole squared, plus three squared is nine. All right, so square root of 20 minus uh, two, 18. 18 to 18, 324 by 25, five squared, 25. 20 minus two is 18, 18 into 18, 324 by five squared, 25 plus nine which is square root of 25 is the common denominator. So 324 plus 25 into 9, 225. Right? So square root of 945 by 25. Okay, now we have square root of 549 by 25. 25, we can bring it out as 5. Square root of 25 is 5. Now, what do we do with uh, 549? See, like if you have uh, uh, 27 in the numerator, then you can, like square root of 27, you can write it as 3 root 3. Okay, this is a pure serve, this is a mixed serve. 
This one is a pure serve. This is a mixed serve. Mixed serve. All right, we have 549 in the numerator. So like when you have square root of 27, you can write it as 3 root 3. So please uh, find the uh, prime factors of 549 and see if you can write that as a mixed serve. That's your job. Please work that and tell me. Is it possible to express 549 as a mixed serve? That is square root of 549 as a mixed serve. Yeah, please work and tell me. I want the factors of 549. That's all. I want the prime factors of 549. You have found it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, tell me. Yes, Babishya. Um, so Start with three. three, right? Three how many times? Three, how many times? Mom, three, 183. Uh, then again, three? 61, mom. Okay, 61 is a prime number, or can we divide further? Sixty-one is a prime number. Okay, so we have square root of? 3 into 3 into 61 divided by 25 or you can just write 5 into 5. Okay, so from uh, 2 3s, 1 3 out, from 2 5s, 1 5 out. And 65 rem 61 remains under the square root. So it is 3 by 5 root 61. 3 by 5 root 61 units. There's a length of AB. Okay, now BC. BC is equal to square root of Okay, so two two plus two by five, the whole square plus uh, eight minus six, the whole square. This is square root of 5 is a common denominator. So 5 to the 10 plus 2, the whole squared plus uh, 2 squared, 4. Square root of 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 squared is 144. 5, 5 squared, 25 plus 4. LCM, 25. 25. 144 plus 100. So square root of 244 by 25. Time factors of 244, 2, 122, 261. So it is square root of 2 into 2 into 61 divided by 5 into 5. So from two twos, one two out, from two fives, one five out, root 61 units. So this is the length of BC. Next, AC 
is equal to square root of <clears throat> oh i don't need such a big symbol so ac is equal to square root of 2 plus 4 the whole square plus 8 minus 3 the whole square so square root of 2 plus 4 6 squared 36 plus 5 squared uh, 25 which is 61. Children, just a minute. Yeah, please continue. See if the sum of uh, two line segments is equal to the third one. I'll just come back in two minutes. Yeah, children, I'm back. Okay, so now what do we observe? This is root 61. That is 1 root 61. Root 61 is 1 root 61. And it's very clear that 3 by 5 plus 2 by 5 is 5 by 5, which is 1. 3 by 5 plus 2 by 5 is 5 by 5, which is 1. So we have AB plus BC. We'll have to work AB plus BC. What is AB plus BC? AB is 3 by 5 root 61 and BC is 2 by 5 root 61. Okay. AB plus BC. So we need to add this. So what is common? Root 61 is common. So you have 3 by 5 plus 2 by 5. So root 61, 3. This is 5 by 5, which is 1. So it is root, uh, root 61. Let me just... Uh, no, I think that that part you can understand. You don't have to go so many steps for this. Okay, so this is um, what do I write? <laughs> a five by five. Okay, five. No, no, children. You know this. So this is root sixty-one. Okay, so it's okay. Let me write one root sixty-one, which is root sixty-one units. Three by uh, five plus two by five is five by five, which is one. So one root sixty-one, which is root sixty-one units. So clearly AB plus BC is equal to AC. See, not that AB plus BC should be equal to AC. If the points are like this, you know, if you have B here, C here, and A here, then BC plus uh, AC will be equal to AB. Not that, not that the points collinear should be in this order, A, B, and C. They can be in any order. So if if the points lie like this, B, C, and A, then B, C plus C, A will be equal to A, B. If you have A here, um, okay, if you have A here, C here, and B here, then C, A plus A, B will be equal to B, C. So now, how do you make out which two line segments to add? So for that, you need to just have a look at the three uh, line segments, the lengths of the three line segments. 3 by 5 root 61, 2 by 5 root 61. So you can just do that in your mind. No? So this is 5 by 5 root 61, which is 1 root 61 or just 61, root 61. And here we have root 61. So we have to add A, B, and B, C. So it's situational. Depending on the situation, you will uh, you know realize like which two line segments to add. So here AB plus BC is equal to AC. Therefore, the points A, B, and C are collinear. Therefore, A, B, C are collinear points. Collinear points. And you can see A, B, B, C. B repeats. No? So B lies on AC. A, B, B, C, B. So B lies on A, C. B lies on A, C. Like this it is. A, B is uh, 3 by 5 root 61. This is 2 by 5 root 61. And A, C is root 61. A, B, if it is P, Q, Q, R, that means Q lies in the middle. 
two lies in the middle. It can also be like this. C, uh, B, A. It can also be like this. B lies on the join of A and C. That's all it is. B lies between uh, A and C. A and C in the border. And B on the join of A and C. Okay, next one. Just go back to the uh, uh, questions we took up in the first class. Have we tried this question? Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Have we understood how to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line segment? second children. And we try to find out if we have uh, taken up this question earlier. No response. Okay. So are we all, are we all there, children? Raise your hand. Children, use the emoji, raise your hand. So, Aniruddhan, Swati, Blessi, Bhavishya, Jayavarshanya, Nograha, Aragamai, Renu, Akshaja, Krishna Priyan, Tanishka, and Sri Vatsan. All right.
Now, children, my question is, please look into your classwork and let me know if we have taken up this question earlier. No harm in doing it again, but I just want to know so that I know how much to explain. Okay, I'm not getting any response, so I assume that we haven't done it earlier. Fine. So find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line segment. All right. So let's just take this line segment AB. AB is a line segment, and L is the L is the perpendicular bisector of AB. L is the perpendicular bisector of AB. So that means L makes 90 degrees with AB and also L bisects AB. So O is the midpoint of AB. Line segment AB, L is the perpendicular bisector <clears throat> of AB, which means line L makes 90 degrees with AB and also O is the midpoint of AB. L bisects AB. So here O is the midpoint of AB. Now, when you take any point on this line L, Take any point on the line L, any point, this point, this point, any point. You take any point on this line L, okay? And uh, join it to the ends of the line segment. Join that to the ends of the line segment. Join that to the ends of the line segment. Any point on the line L and join that point to the ends of the line segment. So you can show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. All right? These two triangles are congruent to each other. Why? Because uh, in this triangle here we have 90, here in this triangle here we have 90. And then this is the common side, this is the common side. And then OA is equal to OB because it's bisected, no? OA is equal to OB. So what's the rule? What is the rule by which the two triangles are congruent? Yeah, louder. Correct. Who's that? Tanishka. Hmm, Tanishka. Very good. Thank you. SA's rule. Using SA's congruence rule, uh, we can say that the two triangles are congruent to each other. So CPCT, if I call this point, say um, P. CPCT, we have PA is equal to PB. PA is equal to PB, CPCT. Let's just see that again. Okay, so we said <clears throat> take any point on the line L. You can take it below also, anywhere. Take any point on the line L. So take this point P on L and join P to the ends of the line segment. Okay. Now these two triangles, AOP and BOP, are congruent to each other. We'll see how. So 90 here, 90 here because perpendicular, L is perpendicular to AB. And then OP is the common side to the two triangles. And OA is equal to OB because AB is bisected at O. So by SAS rule, side angle side, because it's 90 degrees, it's not RHS. SAS rule, SAS congruence criterion, the two triangles are congruent to each other. So CPCT, we have AP is equal to BP. AP is equal to BP. So what is the result? Any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the ends of the line segment. 
if you take any point like P on the perpendicular bisector, it will be equidistant from the ends of the line segment. See, if you join this one to A and B, you will get the same result now that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Therefore, this line segment is equal to this line segment. So, in words, we say that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the ends of the line segment. So here the line segment is AB. AB, address of A, 7, 1, address of B, 3, 5. Okay. And this is the perpendicular bisector. Let's take this point P. We don't know the address of P, so X, Y. You can also say A, comma B, whatever. We, don't, we, we take a point on the perpendicular bisector, P, X, comma Y, <clears throat> and we join. Okay. So we know that, we know that, okay, let's define what is this uh, L. L is the perpendicular bisector. L line L is the perpendicular bisector of AB. P is any point. P is any point on AB. And uh, we know that, we know that P A is equal to P B. P A is equal to P B. Or you can write, instead of saying we know that, you can write, write since uh, the triangle the congruent. Since triangle A O P is congruent to Triangle BOP by the SAS rule. PA is equal to PB. PA is equal to PB. So line L is the perpendicular bisector of AB. P is any point on AB. <coughs> oh, sorry. P is any point on the line L. P is any point on the line L. So since AOP is congruent to triangle BOP, P A is equal to PB. So this is the condition we are going to work with to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. To find the equation of the perpendicular bisector, that is to find the equation of L. We are going to work with the condition P A is equal to PB. So P A is equal to PB or P A square is equal to PB square. Okay, so x minus 7 the whole square, x minus 7 the whole square plus x minus 1, sorry, uh, y minus 1 the whole square is equal to x minus 3 the whole square plus y minus 5 the whole square. Here also you can transpose, you know, you can transpose and use the identity a squared minus b squared if you want, but here, because it's a square of a binomial, it's easy to expand. We can do this faster because, you know, like we've been doing this since seventh standard. So you can do this faster. If, if you want, you can also transpose like this here. X minus 7, the whole squared minus X minus 3, the whole squared is equal to Y minus 5, <clears throat> the whole squared minus Y minus 1, the whole squared. You can also work it like this and work it as a difference of two squares. Uh, a plus B into A minus B. Okay, let me just continue like this. You can also expand children. You can also use a plus b the whole square and uh, a minus, oh, no, everywhere it is a minus b the whole square here. So you can do that. Okay, uh, let me not, uh, so you just, just make a note that you can also do it like this. You can also do it like this or you can use identity. Okay, let me continue like this. Now, <clears throat> a plus b. A plus B.
plus B into A minus B is equal to A plus B into A minus B. So X minus seven plus X minus three into X minus seven minus X plus three is equal to Y plus five plus Y minus one into Y minus five minus Y plus one. So 2x minus 10 into versus minus 4 is equal to 2y plus 4 <clears throat> minus 4, right? Yeah. So minus 4 on either side gets cancelled. You can take out two common. You have, what do you have? x minus 5 is equal to two common y plus 2. So 2 gets cancelled on both the sides. So we have x minus 5 is equal to y plus 2. Take all the terms to one side. x minus y minus 7 is equal to 0 is the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. Perpendicular bisector of AB. So the perpendicular bisector is a line and we know that every line is given by a linear equation in two variables x and y. And you can see that x minus y minus 7 is equal to 0 is a linear equation in two variables x and y. So clearly that's the uh, equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, the answer doesn't end there. We have to answer two more things. So seven comma one, three comma five. X minus this Y minus one the whole square X. <clears throat> oh. I just have uh, the final answer in the paper. The answer I've got here does not match with the final answer I have here. So I just. Uh, gone wrong here. Here I've made a mistake. This is minus five. 
So sorry, this is yeah, minus five children. So this will be minus six. This is minus six. And so then this will be minus six. So this will be minus three. <clears throat> So then this will be minus three, then this will be minus two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So this is the answer. Yeah, now I got it right. X minus one minus two is equal to zero. So here, you know, like by mistake, I shouldn't make that mistake, but here instead of uh, y minus phi, I had by mistake written y plus phi. So I didn't get the final answer right. Now I've corrected it, children. Please do the same. Okay, so next is to um, <clears throat> uh, find the point of intersection of this line with the x axis and y axis. Okay, see here. We'll just uh, have a look at this line segment of the Cartesian plane. A seven comma one. So like seven comma one. A seven comma one and B three comma five. Three comma five. B three comma five. Okay. So this is the line segment A B. And so this is the perpendicular bisector, roughly. Okay. So this is the oh, I don't want to pass through the origin. Just a second. Okay. Oh. Okay, so this is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Become too long once again. Okay, that's okay. 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 So this of the uh, line segment AB looks in the Cartesian plane. <clears throat> We've plotted the points A and B roughly, and you can see the line segment AB and the line L, which is the perpendicular bisector of AB. And you can see that the line L intersects the x axis at this point and the y axis at this point. This is very rough children. See, I'm just, uh, you know, like giving you an idea about what the question means. Find, also find its uh, point of intersection with the x axis and y axis. Just to make you understand that. Okay, we need to find the coordinates of the uh, point of intersection of this line with the x axis and y axis. So I just wanted to visualize that, what that question means. So this perpendicular bisector L intersects the x-axis at this point and y-axis at this point. See, maybe it intersects the x and y-axis at some other points. I'm just asking you, to, I'm just uh, showing you this uh, diagram to visualize. <clears throat> All right. So these may not be the exact points. So you need to find the address of these two points. OK, so now let's uh, find out the point at which uh, L cuts the X axis. OK, so let's find. The coordinates. The coordinates. Of the point. Where the perpendicular bisector perpendicular bisector cuts the x axis here y is 0 no so when y is 0 because you know on the x axis every point the y coordinate is 0 for every point the y coordinate is 0 so when y is 0 X minus Y minus 2 is equal to 0. X minus Y minus 2 is equal to 0. 
is the equation of the perpendicular bisector. And we know that every point on this line will satisfy the equation. So this point lies on the line L, so it will satisfy the equation. <clears throat> so when y is 0, x minus 0 minus 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to 2. So 2 comma 0 is the x-intercept. It's called the x-intercept. Is the x-intercept. X-intercept meaning the point where the line cuts the x-axis. 2 comma 0 is the x-intercept. Now let's find the coordinates. of the point where the perpendicular bisector, where the perpendicular bisector cuts the y-axis, cuts the y-axis. So cuts the y-axis meaning when x is zero, when x is zero, because we know that on the y-axis, the x coordinate of every point on the y axis is 0. When x is 0, x minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. Because see here, this is the point. We are trying to find the coordinates of this point. It lies on line L, right? So it will satisfy the equation. Okay. So 0 minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. Minus y is equal to 2. y is equal to minus 2. So minus 2, oh, oh no, 0 comma minus 2 is the y-intercept. <clears throat> 0 comma minus 2 is the y-intercept. Yeah. So 2 comma 0 and... Um, Okay, let's just uh, sum up. Please listen. The question is find the equation. Please stop writing. Listen. Please listen. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining the points A and B. So the condition we use to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector is, so here if the point on the perpendicular bisector is P, P is any point on the perpendicular bisector, and A and B are the ends of the line segment. So the condition we use is PA is equal to PB. Because we know that every point lying on the perpendicular bisector will be equidistant from the ends of the line segment. Every point lying on the perpendicular bisector will be equidistant from the ends of the line segment. So PA is equal to PB is the condition, or PA square is equal to PB square. So when you work that, you will get, finally, you will have to take all the terms to one side. And you see that you have a linear equation in x and y. See at x minus y minus 2 is equal to 0 is a linear equation in x and y. The question is to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. The perpendicular bisector is a line. And we know that every line is given by a linear equation in two variables x and y. And that's what we have here. So x minus y minus 2 is equal to 0 is the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB. Now when you see these two points A and B in the Cartesian plane, when, these, when you locate these two points A and B in the Cartesian plane, roughly they look like this. And you can see the line L, which is the perpendicular bisector of AB, cutting the x-axis and y-axis at distinct points. OK, you can see L cutting the x-axis and y-axis. 
so the next question is to find the address of the point where the perpendicular bisector cuts the x axis and also the address of the point where the perpendicular bisector cuts the y axis at which point does the perpendicular bisector cut the x axis find the coordinates at which point does the perpendicular bisector cut the y axis find the coordinates these are the next questions to answer for that we know that every point on the uh, for every point on the x axis the y coordinate is zero and for every point on the y axis the x coordinate is zero so when you when you use in the equation of the perpendicular bisector when you use y is equal to zero and find the corresponding value for x you have found the x intercept and when you use when you substitute x as zero and find the corresponding y value you have found the y intercept these are the other terms x intercept and y intercept are the terms used to uh you know refer these points the point where the perpendicular bisector intersects the x axis is the x intercept and the point where the not it need not be perpendicular bisector any line okay the point where the line meets the x axis is the x intercept and the point where the line meets the y axis is the y intercept so y is 0 finding corresponding value for x x is 0 finding corresponding value for y will give you the coordinates of these two points yeah so our rough uh, sketch is actually okay 2 comma 0 so this is 2 comma 0 This one is two comma zero, and this one is zero comma minus two. Okay. Next one.
<laughs> I have to take curves and bends to make it pass through this point. OK, so you know they're all line segments. They're not bent lines or curved lines. OK, it's a straight line. So you can address that. Let's see. OK, <clears throat> so here triangle ABC. AD median from A on BC. AD is the median from the vertex A to the side BC and D is the midpoint of BC because AD is the median. D is the midpoint of BC because AD is the median. E is the midpoint of AC because BC, BE is the median. And F is the midpoint of AB because CF is a median. AD is the median from the vertex A on BC. So D is the midpoint of BC. BE is the median from the vertex B to the side AC. So E is the midpoint of AC. CF is the median from the vertex C to the side AB. So F is the midpoint of AB. And the point where the, uh, the point where the three medians meet here, which is marked G, is a centroid of the triangle ABC. The point of concurrence, the point of concurrence, meaning the point where, uh, you know, they meet, the medians meet. The point intersection is used for uh, the uh, intersection is for two lines. When two lines meet at a point, it's called the point of intersection. When three or more lines go through the same point or meet at a point, it's called the point of concurrence. This is the point of intersection. This is the point of concurrence. Exactly two lines, point of intersection. Three or more than three lines, point of concurrence. Now the important result is, You can see that the median G, the median, oh sorry, the centroid G lies on every median. G lies on AD, G lies on BE, G lies on CF. The centroid G lies on AD, median AD. It lies on the median BE. It also lies on the median CF. Now the centroid divides the median in the ratio. 2 is to 1. Centroid divides the median and the ratio 2 is to 1. OK. G lies on. G lies. On AD. OK. G divides. Or I can write it in one. G lies on AD di dividing, dividing, dividing. Okay, let me take the next slide, children. I don't want to squeeze here. It's the next slide.
So AG is to GD. BG is to GE. Okay, so the uh, central divides the median in the ratio two is to one. So it's important which is two parts, which is one part. From the vertex to the central is two parts. From the vertex, from the vertex to the central, this is two parts. From the central to the midpoint is one part. From the central to the midpoint, this is one part. From the vertex to the centroid is two parts. From the centroid to the midpoint is one part. So see here. Uh, median BE. Median BE. G lies on BE, right? So G divides BE in the ratio 2 is to 1. BG is two parts. BG is two parts. That is from the vertex to the centroid is two parts. From the centroid to the midpoint is one part. CF median, G lies on CF and G divides CF in the ratio 2 is to 1. So which is two parts? From the vertex to the centroid. From the vertex to the centroid is two parts. And from the centroid to the midpoint. This is one part. So the centroid divides the median in the ratio 2 is to 1. Because the centroid lies on every median, right? Every median, uh, the centroid lies. So the centroid is uh, the point of division. It divides the median in the ratio 2 is to 1. And how do we find the coordinates of the centroid? 
we can find the coordinates of d e and f using the midpoint formula because d is the midpoint of bc d is the midpoint of bc so you can find the you can find the coordinates of d using the midpoint formula similarly e and f e is the midpoint of ac f is the midpoint of ab so you can find the coordinates of e and f by using the midpoint formula now how do we find the coordinates of g the x coordinate of g is given by x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, not 2, 3. Because the ratio is 2 is to 1, no? So 2 plus 1, 3. The ratio is 2 is to 1, 2 plus 1, 3. And the y coordinate of g is given by y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3. And you know, x1, y1, address of the vertex A, x2, y2, address of vertex B, x3, y3 is the address of the vertex C of the triangle ABC. Now, uh, questions based on uh, centroid uh, we'll take up in the next class. Okay. This is the next question. <clears throat> Check if the points from a quadrilateral. So I'm not working this. Please find A, B. I want the answer from you. Find A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, and also the diagonals A, C, and the B, D. 
let me see <clears throat> who is interested in sharing the answers with me. Yeah, please. Please work and uh, fill up these answers. As in when you finish your fingers, tell me. If you finish AB, tell me uh, the length of uh, AB, the line segment AB. Yeah, AB is. I'm two root thirteen. Thank you, Prenu. Thank you. Okay, two root thirteen. All right. Next. BC root 13. Babishya, what? BC is? Root 13. One, three units. Okay. Okay. Yeah, CD children. Mom, two root five. Two root five. Okay, Bhavishya, two root five. Mom, Prenu. Prenu. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yes. If I'm wrong, you should tell me. Prenu, good. Two root five. But I don't have two root five, Prenu. I have a different answer. Mom, five root two. Five root two. Yeah, that's right. Was that Prenu again or Bhavishya? Bhavishya. Okay, Bhavishya. Yeah, that's right. Phi root 2. Please check Prenu. Phi root 2. Root 85 for DA, ma'am. Swati, root 85, correct. Correct.
ஆட்டில் If at all it forms a quadrilateral A B C D A B C D so we have found A B B C C D D A A C and B D now let's go back to the definitions you know we have seen in standard 9 of a quadrilateral a quadrilateral is a figure obtained by joining four points in a plane in order of which no three points are collinear so see we will just consider four points in a plane in different ways 1 2 3 4 points in a plane all the four points are collinear no quadrilateral is formed no quadrilateral is formed I'll just take the next slide. This is not a part of the answer. We're just trying to understand, uh, you know, when and how a quadrilateral is formed. Four points in a plane. No quadrilateral is formed. No quadrilateral is formed. why because all the four points are collinear so a quadrilateral it's not enough if you have four points a quadrilateral is formed by four points in a plane of which no three points must be collinear of the four points if any three points are collinear no quadrilateral is formed no three points should be collinear so see here in the third case i placed the first dot here 
anyway, like say the second dot here, I shouldn't place the third dot in continuation with this line segment like this here. So somewhere here, the third dot and the fourth dot somewhere here like this. So you can see no three points are collinear, right? Among these four points, no three points are collinear. You cannot, you cannot connect any uh, three points by the same straight line here. Only when the arrangement of the four points is like this, a quadrilateral is formed. No three points must be collinear. So in this arrangement, you can see that no three points are collinear. Then a quadrilateral is formed because we have four points and no three points are collinear. So a quadrilateral is formed. But if you join like this, no quadrilateral is formed. That's why in bracket I wrote in order. You must join the points in order. In order. You cannot join it like this. So what do we mean by in order? If you start, if you start here, if you join this point to this point, then see here you should join it in order like this in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. In order. Okay, so here a quadrilateral is formed. So going back to the question, can you identify uh, the uh, you know uh, any three line segments where the sum of two is equal to the third one? We have six line segments here: A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, A, C, B, D. We have six line segments. Can you identify three line segments, any three line segments, in which the sum of two of them is equal to the third one? Because that's a check for collinearity, right? Yeah. Identify three line segments in which the sum of any two of them is equal to the third one. You have to tell me, so I'm waiting for the answer from your end. Yes, children. What is this? See, in this case, it's very obvious. No, you don't have to, you don't need this long. No, no, what is this? Uh, my question is not clear. Should I repeat? There are six line segments. Pick three of them in which the sum of uh, any two of them is equal to the third one. Mom, root 13 and root 13 and 2 root 13. Correct. Very good, Trenu. Root 13, root 13 and 2 root 13. So the line segments are uh, AB, BC and AC. Now, we see that BC plus AC is equal to, which is 2 root 13. And AB is 2 root 13. Therefore, BC plus AC is equal to AB. This means, this means ABC are collinear. Are collinear. 
what is repeating b c a c c repeats so c lies on a b b c a c so b c a c like this okay and d is somewhere here so no quadrilateral is formed because a quadrilateral cannot be formed with four points in which three points are collinear. So here are the points B, C and A are collinear. And the check for collinearity is sum of two line segments equal to the third one. So here B, C plus A, C is equal to A, B. C repeats B, C, A, C, C. So C lies on A, B. So if the points B, C and A are collinear, then no quadrilateral is formed. So A, B, C, D does not form a quadrilateral. Therefore, the points A, B, C and D do not form a quadrilateral. Clear all of you? Yes, okay. Okay, we'll just take up one more question and uh, wind up the session for today.
So D is the midpoint of uh, BC. D is the midpoint of BC is given. E is the midpoint of CA. E is the midpoint of CA. And F is the midpoint of AB. Okay, so we have to find the uh, coordinate of the vertices of the triangle, A, B, and C. So let me call them A, B, C, D, or you can even call it X1, Y1. Okay, let's say X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X2. Anything, A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, or you can say x1 comma y1 x2 comma y2 x3 comma y3 okay so what do we have by midpoint formula by midpoint formula okay now, uh, D is the midpoint of BC, right? So D is given by the address. Children see here, D is given by the address. Let's do this together. D is given by the address 3, comma minus 2. But how do you find the coordinates of D? Using uh, the endpoints B and C, right? Because D is the midpoint of BC. Let me just write what I'm working here. One minute. D is the midpoint of BC. Therefore, by midpoint formula, midpoint formula, okay. See, we know that D is given by 3 comma minus 2, right? But how do you find the coordinates of D using B and C? How do you do it? x1 plus x2 by 2, y1 plus y2 by 2. So d is given by x2 plus x3 by 2, comma, y2 plus y3 by 2. Children, please tell me if this step is fine. D is the midpoint of BC. So by the midpoint formula, we already know the coordinates of D. But how do you find, how do you work to find using the coordinates of B and C and using the midpoint formula x2 plus x3 by 2 comma y2 plus y3 by 2. So now equate the x coordinate is equal to the x coordinate, the y coordinate is equal to the y coordinate. So x2 plus x3 by 2 is equal to 3. So this implies x2 plus x3 is equal to 6. We'll just call this equation 1. Similarly, y2 plus y3 by 2 is equal to minus 2. This implies y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4. We'll call this equation 2. A is the midpoint. of AC. Okay, so therefore, by midpoint formula, so we already know that uh, the coordinates of E are minus 3, comma 1. Minus 3, comma 1. But how do you find it using the coordinates of A and C? So E is found like this, x1 plus x3 by 2 comma y1 plus y3 by 2. x1 plus x3 by 2, y1 plus y3 by 2. Now equate the x coordinates and y coordinates. So we have 
x1 plus x3 y2 is equal to minus 3. This implies x1 plus x3 by 2 is equal to minus 3. This implies x1 plus x3 is equal to minus 6 is equation 3. y1 plus y3 by 2 is equal to 1. This implies y1 plus y3 is equal to 2. The equation 4. <clears throat> Okay, and then F is the midpoint of AB. F is the midpoint of AB. Therefore, by midpoint formula, okay, F, X1 plus X2, X1 plus X2, by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 by 2. But we already know that the coordinates of f are given by 4 comma minus 3. So equating x1 plus x2 by 2 is equal to 4. This implies x1 plus x2 is equal to 8. This is equation 5. y1 plus y2 y2 is equal to minus 3, which implies y1 plus y2 is equal to minus 6, is equation 6. Now we'll add all the equations that have x1, x2, and x3. So 1, 3, and 5. Adding 1, 3, and 5 we get what is 1 x2 plus x3 is equal to 6 this 3 x1 plus x3 is minus 6 incorrectly x2 x3 is 6 x1, x3 is minus 6 and 5, x1 plus x2 is equal to 8. Now we'll add these three equations. So you'll get 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 2 times x3 is equal to 8. So 2 common x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 8. x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 8 by 2, which is 4. 8 by 2, you know, so it is 4. 4. Now, we know that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 4. But what is x1 plus x2? 8. So 8 plus x3 8 plus x3 is equal to 4. So what is x3? x3 is equal to minus 4. Now we know that x1 plus x3 is equal to minus 6. So x1 minus 4 is equal to minus 6. So x1 is equal to minus 2. Similarly, now we have to find x2. So x2 plus x3 is equal to 6. You can substitute however you want. We have to find x1, x2, x3. So this is not the only way you can work. You understand this is simple. You have x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 4. 
So use this equation and uh, use these results. Substitute and find the values of x1, x2, and x3. So x2 plus x2 minus 4 is equal to 6. So x2 is equal to 10. Now we'll add equations 2, 4, and 6. Adding equations 2, 4, and 6. We get two is what y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4 y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4. Then <clears throat> y1 plus y3 is equal to 2. And y1 plus y2 minus 6. So 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 is equal to minus 8. Two common y1 plus y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 8. So y1 plus y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4. y1 plus y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4. You can substitute this also, y2 plus y3. What is y2 plus y3 minus 4? You can find y1 first. y1 and this y2 plus y3 is minus 4. y1 minus 4 is equal to minus 4. So y1 is equal to 0. You can also do it like this. So y1 plus y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4. So what is y1 plus y2? Um, minus 6. So plus y3 is equal to minus 4. So y3 is equal to 2. So anyways, you just have to substitute and find. And now we have we have found y1 and y3. We have to find y2. So where do we have y2? We have y2 plus y3. y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 4. So y2 plus 2 is equal to minus 4. y2 is equal to 6. I pray my calculations are correct. So now A is given by the coordinates of A, B, C, R, A. A is what? X1, Y1. What is X1? X1 minus 2. Y1 is 0. X2. X2, 10. Y2, minus 6 x3 minus 4 y3 three. now i won't take the answer i'm keeping my fingers crossed i'm very scared and nervous yes i pat myself on my back yeah right minus 2 comma 0 10 comma minus 6 and minus 4 comma 2 perfect very simple but just it's very elaborate answer, very simple and elaborate it is. All right. 
So I've shared all the images of uh, today's class on WhatsApp. Any questions, children? Any doubts? Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah, all right, children. So uh, don't leave the meeting. I'll just uh, one second. I'll just stop the recording and. Yeah.